What is up, everybody? This is Lyle, No Hippie Trucking and Transportation. Just wanted to come in and give my two cents on this last week's safety meeting that Prime puts out every Friday morning. Before I get to that, I just want to talk about a couple other things that I've been kind of thinking about uh, the last day and a half or so. Scrolling through Facebook, I'm seeing like some people talking about, you know, quitting and things like that. And first of all, I'd like to congratulate everybody that's coming back to Prime that I talked to that left and is either coming back or wants to come back. Congratulations on that. Secondly, as far as this quitting goes, you know, maybe this is a new thing. I don't know if this is like part of this quiet quitting generation or definitely a younger generation than I'm coming from. Apparently, I'm not sure. But this whole thing where you seek attention on the way out to me just seems, I don't want to call it, I don't know, this attention seeking, like, I'm going to be quitting. You know, I mean, you know, you want to learn how to quit like a boss, just quit. That's the easiest way to do it. You don't have to, you know, seek validation or anything on the way out. Just quit. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to be upset with that one. Anyway, enough about that. It's just very, maybe I'm just old school, I don't know, but to me it's just a trait that, like this, I don't get it. Anyway, let's talk about the safety meeting. So, uh, a couple things they mentioned in the safety meeting, I wanted, or a couple things about the meeting I wanted to talk about, uh, really nothing that is out of the ordinary except for this personal conveyance situation, which I'll kind of get into a little bit, but they were speaking about some of the violations that they were getting in uh, DOT inspections, seatbelt violations, okay? Now, that seems to be an obvious one, kind of, but one of the things that they were saying in the meeting is that people are getting violations that were saying they had their seatbelt on, but then the officer comes around and they're sitting in the truck without their seatbelt on. I can personally vouch to, I never got the violation, but I got pulled into a inspection in Utah at one point, you know, over the loudspeaker, they tell me to go pull into this spot or something like that. I'm not expecting the DOT officer to run up on me as quick as he did. So I got up out of my seat and was talking to my trainer at the time. He was in the bunk and I was like, it was my first inspection, so I was asking him some questions or whatever. The DOT officer comes around, knocks on my door, and he just, he wasn't going to hit me with a violation because obviously he couldn't tell if I was, you know, driving without a seatbelt or not based on that because I was standing up when he went there. But he did say, you might want to just sit in the truck and wait for an officer to come out before you take off your seatbelt, get out of the seat or anything like that. So I just wanted to put that out there to some of the new people that are coming in. Another thing they were talking about was reading your bills. Uh, at the at the 01 and the 90. The reason I'm bringing this up is one of the friends that I speak to at Prime just got, uh, just picked up a load the other day and uh, got the bills drove or they had to leave as soon as they got the bills drove off to do the depart call and doing the depart call guess what found out they got the wrong bills and had to turn back around and uh, go back in luckily was able to get the other driver that had the other bills and everything was fine so you know as much as i really don't like sitting on hold for some of these depart calls primarily at night if it hadn't been for a depart call or even just putting in that macro, this may not have got caught. So uh, there is a reason to have that, and uh, it helped in this situation. So uh, it does happen, and there have been there's been one time when I was given the wrong bills uh, when I was getting unloaded. So it does happen. Check your bills always. Uh, okay, so then they spoke about the 30 day. Uh, personal conveyance test that they've been running with the three company fleet or you know three company fleets well they're adding that same thing to three lease fleets now what they were saying in this meeting was everything has been running smooth you know we've only got this many calls and 
you know, some of the concerns that were brought up in the meeting, they kind of brushed over them a little bit more than, and I'm going to get to that a little bit after this, but they kind of brushed over a little bit some of the concerns that some of the drivers had. And here's what I know. You know, I talked to a lot of people at Prime, all the way from 20-year drivers, all the way down to somebody that just came into, uh, just came came to Prime. And one person that I know actually wanted to use personal conveyance. They said it took 11 minutes to get through on personal conveyance. And then I guess once you talk to them, it's not automatic. Like, it's not like they hit a switch and you're able to go to PC. So they took a little bit longer after that for them to actually be able to uh, go through that on their Qualcomm. So I did hear that. I also heard from another driver that just said, you know, I, I called, but to be honest with you, it's just too much of a headache. So I'm just going to just go to the drive line. Uh, another driver and said that they called. And I don't know if this was a logs advisor or a fleet manager they spoke to. Wanted to PC to find parking after they left a or, yeah, receiver called in to get that permission to use PC and was told that they had hours on their clock. Now, to me, personal conveyance has nothing to do with if you have hours on your clock. Personal conveyance is just the way I need to, I'm going to talk to my logs advisor in depth when I'm back in there, but almost every time if I'm at a shipper or receiver, if my next move is to go to a truck stop and find parking, I'm almost always going to use PC unless it's obviously like a long, long way or maybe if the weather's bad. I don't really, if I'm going to get in an accident, I'd rather get in an accident on duty driving than personal conveyance. So, but typically I use it and I use it for what it's for. Now there was a time that I maybe dabbled in the gray area and I even confessed to my logs advisor. That's how straight up I am with it. So, uh, I think that maybe it's a little bit less convenient than what they're looking for. Um, my wife's coming home, so you might be hearing dogs barking or something like that, or them talking about some random shit, so that's happening. Um, so, anyway, that's kind of what I'm hearing from the field as far as this test goes, not what's being told uh, in the meetings. Now, my thoughts are this, and I almost feel like it's almost, I almost feel like I'm getting talked to like I'm in the third grade. Not that they're talking down to me, but it's almost like they're almost gingerly approaching this situation, trying not to upset anybody. And I came out of businesses where they ain't worried about you getting upset. So I would have personally just said, listen, Here's why we're going to here's why we're going to this. Y'all been fucking up out here. This is what's been happening. These are the results. And this is what it is. I know it's not what everybody wants to hear, but you got to live with it. And as a matter of fact, we're thinking about getting rid of the, the, the whole program. You know, whatever. Just kind of the whole punch in the face aspect. But it almost is. I find that a manager or owner or anybody that just comes out directly like that and just kind of hits you with it is a lot. I don't know the word I want to use, but effective would be a way, a word you could use or whatever. But I think part of the problem and some of the pushback that people are having with this is because they're not understanding the, what the total ramifications are. They keep skirting around that. You know, they'll say little things that tell you what the issue is, but not really like, here's how much of an issue it is. Now, I think skirting around that doesn't let people understand how big the problem potentially is. And here's what I feel. I feel like they're afraid to just give it to you the way they need to give it to you because they're afraid of people quitting and, you know, truck drivers, you know, I just say, fuck that. Just put it, just do what you got to do. And personally, as much as I use personal conveyance, if they said we're taking it away, it just is what it is. It's not anything that if somebody can't live without it, then that's on them. That might be just the way that I go with it. Just get rid of it rather than, I mean,
I don't know. Uh, those are my thoughts on that. But again, my thoughts again are that they... You ever see like somebody like really go off on their kids and shit? You know, like you might see them at the grocery store and then the a lot of times it's a mother because mothers aren't like... That's what I feel like. I almost feel like we're getting babied into this shit. Like we're getting babied. But oftentimes you'll see a mother at a grocery store like lose total control. And a lot of times it happened more when I was growing up because you could light a kid up. You know, you could practically take off your belt and spank a motherfucker in the store back in the days. But you'd see women primarily going through this in grocery stores. And a lot of the time it was because they'd been telling somebody nicely, you know, be quiet. Don't do this. Don't do that. And then they just let it get to a point where the frustration level was so big that then they just blew up. And I feel kind of we're almost at that point where nipping shit in the bud, you know, Back two years ago, when I first started hearing about this, probably would have been the better way to handle it. And even at this point, just cutting people off PC for misuse of it would probably be a good way to handle it as well. But I'm going to leave that topic alone. Uh, yeah, see, my... My son is here, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was never going to be a time that I had to completely blow up on him or anything like that because I just nip shit in the bud. Yep. I was not beyond the, I was not beyond cussing his little ass out. Don't forget to tell him about school. Oh, yeah. It was you. Yeah, so <laughs> my, so my son was acting a fool in school back in the days and the call comes in from you know, the teacher's school, and I didn't sit there and be like, you know what, you know, just, we're going to need to work on it, or, you know, whatever, it was like, you know, my ass was right up in school the whole next week, I brought in my computer, I was working right in the classroom in them little ass desks in eighth grade, and uh, handling my business before it became a problem, that's what, that's what I see here, is we let the problem get out of control, and now we're trying to handle it, it's easier to nip that shit in the bud, enough about that. Last thing I want to talk about is going to be, uh, you know, Prime got some new bunk rooms, been hearing some good things about that. Uh, somebody I talked to went in there and they said it is, it's the bomb up there. So uh, that's good to hear those bunk rooms in Missouri. Obviously, I don't really give a fuck, uh, but they were becoming a little bit rustic. They did the job, though. That's really all that matters to me. But the new ones... Uh, from the pictures I've seen, what people are saying are off the hook. So uh, really all I had to say about that, I do appreciate you guys stopping by No Hippie Trucking and Transportation. As always, comment, subscribe, and I'm out.